Well, we said in our preview to this game that absolutely anything could happen, but I don't think anybody would have predicted what's just gone down in Lille this afternoon. Welcome back to our Six Nations series, and we're going to be here throughout the entire championship, so hit subscribe to make sure you don't miss out on anything. I've got Elko with me. There he is. How are you doing, Elko? I'm happy. I'm sad. I'm happy. I'm sad. Oh, my God. Roller coaster this afternoon. Unbelievable. Loved it. It was absolutely unbelievable. I'd say there's been some good games yesterday, but I'd say this is game of the weekend. What absolute drama we've just witnessed. And I'm just, I want to start off with the setting, right? So it's it's in Lille, not a rugby stronghold, but I was there during the World Cup and that town took to rugby and really, really went for it. Like it felt like the Rugby World Cup was more alive there than any of the other places that I went to. And I thought that was really evident today. I thought the crowd were enormous from the start before France even gave them anything to cheer. So just for me, a thumbs up to Lille. Yeah, it was it was it was quality. Uh, our our good friend Junior, I don't know if he messaged you, but he messaged me saying, "I hope you guys are going to discuss the booing <laughs> when the kick was been taken at the end." I was like, nah, "That's kind of what the French do, isn't it?" Like in the top fourteen, but they were the crowd was immense, and of course, that that can work against you when you're things aren't going well because at times all you could hear was that incredible band playing and <laughs> there was nothing and you could hear you could hear people shouting on the pitch. I was like, oh it must be a bit weird in a in a you know an indoor stadium when it gets real quiet. But then when it was loud, wow it was crazy. Yeah, it was. And it though I mean there was plenty for the crowd to cheer about in the first half. I thought France looked like they had a real energy about them. They were far from perfect in their execution a lot of the time. But the forwards looked like they were piling onto the ball. They were making metres, driving malls, were charging up the pitch. And the crowd absolutely loved it. Yeah, there was some good stuff. They were, they were, they were close to being themselves, um, certainly with intense execution, still way, way off. But, you know, when they're... When you've got um, Antonio suddenly popping up in the midfield, <laughs> charging, I was like, "Wow, okay, they've had to think about this." And and you know, obviously added a bit. And um, yeah, there was some, there was some um, Twigalagi as well was was doing some great stuff. Um, you know, um, and and clearly they were in the ascendancy for most of that first half, and and there uh, with a very powerful scrum as well. Yeah, they certainly looked like they were switched on. But, oh my word, so were the Italians. I thought their defence was heroic at times, to be honest. The size of those men charging at them. And they chopped them down time and time and time again. Um, I thought the Italian defence today was just just meteoric, almost. Yeah, I've got, I've got a first thing written down in my notes here. Is, is the D was just unreal. And I think, you know, you, you've got to look at... Uh, the last time these two teams played in the World Cup and how upset and annoyed we were at the absolute lack of any heart or energy or anything that Italy came to town with. And it was the complete opposite. And hats off to, to uh, the new coaching team because th- it was light and day. Um, they were immense. They were it, probably one of the best defensive um, sort of performances I've seen in a very long time. Now, not system-wise. They were all over the shop system-wise. <laughs> but in terms of individual man test hitting people. I mean, how many times did Antonio get chopped? Twigalagi got chopped. Um, you know, it was it was really, really amazing to see. And they just kept in. You know, it was like watching uh, someone walking a tight tightrope, you know. <laughs> they were so close to, to, like, it all imploding, but they just kept at it, kept them out, kept them out. How it was only 10 points at that stage. I think they got to 13, didn't they, by halftime? But unbelievable defence, uh, energy, amazing, fair play. Yeah, just outstanding from Italy. And you could see it. Like, you could see it in their faces. You could see it in their eyes. Every time there was a close-up, you could see how much it meant to them. And I love that. That's what, for me, Italian rugby is based on that. So it was great to see it today. Talking of the points, let's talk about the tries. So all of them sneaked over. And I think there's a really interesting thing here in terms of law because he, he initially knocked the ball forward or the ball went forward off his hand. And then at some point, he, he regathered it and uh, we clearly grounded the ball. What was your take on this one, Elko? Well, it's it's the same as the the Scotland France one, isn't it? It's uh, the question was just slightly worded differently, wasn't it? It was Ridley had a had a uh, in his opinion he saw the ball grounded, and then it was up to um, Tempest to find something that you know showed something different. Um, 
and uh, I, cu- I couldn't see whether it looked like he knocked it on, but then did he regather it before it touched against St. Ta- we don't know. So therefore, you just have to go through protocol and, and you get a try. I know a lot of people were upset about it and saying, oh, it was clear. No, it wasn't clear. If it was clear, Tempest, who's an excellent referee, would have said, no, it wasn't on. So you just have to go with the protocol and those, those things. And we'll talk about protocol a bit later as well. <laughs> we will indeed. Um, I agree. I don't think there was any clear evidence that it was a knock on. But the interesting part for me is if the ball travels forward off your hand all right, and you regather it before it touches any other person or or furniture as well. So I think the post would have been included in that. Then it's not a knock on. Um, but if you like it looked to me like he knocked it backwards and then maybe sort of landed on it. Um, and th- this is where it gets very interesting because the wa- wa- the law says you must regather it, but there's been two top referees at some point in the past who've disagreed on this. So, like if you're, for example, you're running down the pitch, juggling the ball, but then the last movement you slap it back. Is that a knock on? Yeah, because you haven't regathered it. Right. By the law it is, but there's a, yeah. a certain top referee who yeah, doesn't referee saw- it like that. Oh, really? Because we saw it yeah. yesterday with, with, with the try that was disallowed for Ireland, right? Because it it, it, it it bounced kind of sideways off Henshaw, but because he didn't, the next person to touch it, it was, no, it was called a cool, cool yeah. yeah. Anyway, it's a, another one of those grey areas which makes our game very difficult to referee. However, for this incident, I think the, the officials got it bang on and uh, the try was rightly given. Yeah. Now... Italy, as we've dis- uh, already said, were defending heroically. And what made their job even harder was that every time they got the ball back, and they did get it back a good number of times from a couple of turnovers and French errors and things like that, they were just so poor at looking after the ball. Um, it was like, yeah. it was so frustrating for me in the first half. They're putting all that amazing work into defence, and then as soon as they get it back, they'll make an error or knock it on or just something. And um, that just made them have to work even harder. Yeah, it was uh, again. I was written down sort of uh, suicide. It was just like they put in all that effort, and then someone would would knock it on. There was bits where France had kicked through. And I think I only you're just like just kick it out. And he's like <laughs> he gets he gets caught and he shovels it on, and then Garbizi kind of slices it, and then they're under pressure again. And you're, you're just like guys, just get it off off the park. But it kind of that hecticness, uh, the. The, the just how high intensity was and the scramble actually suited what they were doing and maybe that was part of the ploy not to give <laughs> um France sort of um launch plays off you know settled line outs and, and that kind of thing but god so many times I, I would have been screaming at my backs to just get it off the park you know but um <laughs> Just mad, just mad. It was like just just and 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 time after time after time it happened you know yeah I, I mean yeah, completely. There's one little thing I want to pick out from the first half as well, which really made me laugh. It was a ruck close to the Italian line. I know and, what you're going to say. Yeah, Brex was in there, and Menoncello has <laughs> literally dragged him out by the <laughs> leg. I, was like, I mean, talk about discipline, looking after your, your teammates' discipline as well in that respect. Yeah. It was amazing. I know. So I had a right old guy. I knew you'd see that as well. I had a real <laughs> giggle. And um, I was because he they, they got penalised as well. I thought referees should have gone, ah. That's, you know, they're they're clearly trying to help me here. But, um, yeah, it was very funny. (laughs) Um, And then the last thing. So, Italy, eventually, right towards the end of the half, last three or four minutes or something, did manage to get some phase play in France's half, did manage to do it without coughing up errors or turnovers. And that led to Dante, like, charging out of the line, bolt Mm. upright the entire way and basically smashing Brex in the face. Yellow card and... I, I choose not to try and decide whether this is going to be a red card or not because I've seen so many decisions go either way that I just I just let them get on with it. But it was definitely a, a very much a potential red as I saw it as it happened. Yeah, no, look, I, I think uh, what was very clear was that the you know the comms from from the from the ref was very much like straight away it hits threshold and as soon as it hits threshold, they just hand it over to I think it was Ben Whitehouse in the bunker. So. Um, and then it's up to them what what they do with it. Uh, and I think it's it's we don't know. We, we only see what we see, so we don't know what angles that person has. Maybe they've got more stuff. I don't know. Um, and I don't particularly want to know. It's it's their decision to 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 crack on and and do. But it, it was it, it gave. Uh, uh, what I guess what was interesting to me was that uh, obviously it was then upgraded. 
after half time and 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 would would the Italian coaching staff have had a chance to talk about what happens because they only would have found out literally I think as we all did as I believe man. so too yeah yeah so that would have been obviously oh he would have loved to have known that could then go right this is how we're going to play maybe they had that chat if if I don't know but um yeah and, and uh, uh, Dante's. I mean, this we're trying to change player behavior. It was a bit dull that he came up. So it was the fact he was so upright. He didn't need to be. He could have. He could have done what the Italians were doing, which was, you know, low and chop. Um, but he was looking to get a shot on, and, and which he did. And it was, yeah, it was, it was, it was dangerous. Yeah. So Italy came out and then really started to play a lot in the second half. And they're beautiful waves of phase play with dummy runners. Like I just love to watch Italy play when they're in that kind of mood. I would say that they they looked really fluid at times, but I thought sometimes they had real opportunity to actually move the ball further. Like there were there were several times when I thought they hit the front runner when actually out the back they had huge numbers. Obviously, France down to fourteen men would have made that happen more often. So, but yet they still managed to keep momentum through a lot of these phases. So, I mean, Italy I thought attacked really well at times. Oh, I thought I thought they were outstanding, um, and it's really. For me, um, I sort of I, I tweeted at half time was you know believe, you know it's 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 about believing in yourselves and and they almost sometimes look surprised. You know? <laughs> just you need to just go for it and 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 you know trust in the guys outside you. Um, you know they've done some of the hard work with the short lines as you, uh, but actually you're right. If they had just put pushed out the back, there was there was big big space. I thought I only on the wing was just his intent was incredible. Um, he wanted to run everything, um, and that's you know, he's a bit more experienced. But you know, I think it's a great game for in one way um, for Casada because you know he he'll be able to show some great clips and say, "Look, guys, if we could have done this or done that, look what we could have done." And and I I'd imagine there's a few points out there on the park where they could have they could have broken away, um, but they played with real ambition and intent. And you know, I I, I wrote down as well. Um, following on from what Borthwick was saying in, in, in the post-match for England yesterday, you know, and it's a load of bull, right? Casada's had these guys for three games, right? And look at the intent they're playing with. There's no excuse for England. They can't keep saying, oh, you know, we, you know, we, we were young coaches. It's absolute bull. If you have intent and you want to play, you can play. You know, and they, and they were their backline was 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 brilliant, and the work rate of the forwards I thought was was awesome. Um, and Vincent had a, a you 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 said uh, in our preview was like, oh, I wonder how because he, he he's more in a game where it's sort of broken and it's loose, and how is he going to cope? Jesus was made for him. <laughs> yeah, he played really well, and Matt, he is so fast, isn't he? I mean, he <laughs> did you see the tap penalty he took in the first half from within his own twenty-two. I mean, I think it, all of his teammates like told him off afterwards, but they got away with it and they won a penalty of the next breakdown. The other thing I want to pick out from the second half, which made me chuckle, was when Menoncello kicked the ball through and was charging into the in-goal area. And oh. he, was, he was never going to get there to score, but still did no. the massive, like, Superman dive, just in case. <laughs> yeah. Nearly nearly went through the the advertising for him, didn't he? Um, yeah, it was it was a good... He was like a, like a footballer in, in, uh, in the Premiership or something, but... Um, or Premier League, but... Uh, yeah, he he was really good as well, wasn't he? On the wing, um, he played really, really, really well. Um, out of position, thought he was great. Yeah. Um, now the other really interesting thing I think that happened early in the second half was France basically emptied their subs bench. All but one player came on around, you know, very early in the second half. So I don't know whether you know they were thinking they were struggling with energy at that point, or just being down to fourteen men they needed fresh players on. But it seemed like quite a big gamble, and. The thing, the way it really played out for me that made a massive difference was that Italy suddenly got up, um, got a charge on in the scrum and got sort of uh, benefits in the scrum where it was completely the opposite way in the first half. Uh, Ferrari came on and did a great job, as did our favourite Mirko Spagnola. I thought they were, and it made a huge difference. I also think that. Uh, it took ages and, you know, we were talking about the crowd earlier and when it was, it, it, you could f feel everything just kind of, all the air just kind of went out of the game. It was weird. Whereas Italy kind of kept their 15 fairly, so the same, made changes a bit later and then brought the props on. And Ferrari's the the loose head, right, is he? Tight head. Oh, the tight head. So, 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 oh, so is, who's the, who's the guy with the beard that was bleeding everywhere? So that's, that's, 
Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. that is right. Yeah, he was. Oh, yeah, he was awesome. Um, really, really good. Made a huge difference. And France were, I mean, they were really shook. That that messed them up completely. I think. And all of a sudden, momentum, penalty, penalty, momentum. You could feel it. Um, that they were in this. And as I was saying, just, just believe, just go, just go at it. Yeah, and they did. And they really sort of flew. And eventually, um, <clears throat> after a ton of phases, and again, this goes back to my previous point where Italy was managing to flow forward with their beautiful attacking rugby, not always taking the right option in my mind. I thought there were potentially better options that they could have taken, but still managing to maintain momentum, still managing to keep going forward. And that resulted with Capuozzo getting over in the corner after, again, some more just quality handling from these Italians. Yeah, I thought I thought they were a different gravy in the second half and, and, a, and a credit. Um, you know, they kind of brought their energy um, from the defensive uh, side of things into their attack. And fair play to their fitness levels because, you know, they'd made a hell of a lot of tackles in that first half. And to still have the energy and 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 and, and play and, and and go for it was was commendable. Um, I'm really I'm really happy for them. Um, you know, uh, this is you know France are pretty good. Um, you know, they're, you know they're clearly not not ticking. But there's a there's a lot of frustrated players, particularly in that back line. Peno looks so annoyed all the time. Um, mm. The guy that came on um, for Jalibert uh, um, onto the wing. Um, what's his name? Uh, look, look, look. Mofana. Yeah, Mofana. Like I don't know if you saw like he threw the ball at mm. one of the Italians at one stage. They were they're they're a rattled team, right? But but um you know, fair fair play to Italy, they 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 caused that and, and played well. Yeah. Talking about Pano, there was a there was a period towards the end of the game for about ten or fifteen minutes when it seemed that France's entire ploy was just get the ball to Pano because he, he got the passes so often during that period and did pretty well with what you know the opportunities he had as well. And, you know, if you've got a winger like that, why wouldn't you try and just get the ball to him as often as possible? Yeah, there was. I saw something that they were saying that um, him and Jally Bear had had a row or something. And so maybe that's why when he went off, the ball was getting to, to, to Pano way, way more. Who knows? Who knows what's going on in that, in that, um, in that French camp? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Who knows? Um, following the try, we must say Garbisi, left-hand touchline, left-foot kicker, got the conversion, which was absolutely amazing to make it 13 in mm. all, which mm. then takes us into the final stanzas of this game, where, I mean, God bless them, France could have kicked the ball out for a draw many times and then just continued to run the ball from within their own half, trying to get a win. And I applaud them massively for that. It made for an incredible spectacle. You know, coaches maybe won't applaud them for it, but, you know, I'm a supporter, so whatever. Um, but it led to a turnover. Giuliani, the uh, you know, open side uh, fetcher got in over the ball, which led to our grand finale. Alco, what do you want to say about it? Well, firstly, I, I'm not I, I'm not in the other camp in terms of France running. I think it shows where they are as a team, just sort of out of so they should have kicked the ball off and taken taken the draw. Um, uh, personally, that's what I think. Um, right, okay. In terms of the kick, okay. So, <laughs> Um. Uh, so I, I watched it and then I, I was like, "Hang on, something's happened there. It's weird." I, I thought it was I thought it was weird as well that so from the Italian side, someone came up to say, "Do you want me to hold the ball?" <laughs> We're indoors, mate. There's no there's no wind. How it fell off is just bizarre. Just uh, he obviously hadn't placed it quite correctly. But if you watch you watch on replay, when the ball comes off, I think the second row for France charges. You're not allowed to move. Pal, you ain't, you are not allowed to move. You're not allowed to do anything. He's he's charged up, pointing, shouting. The referee's saying going back. In fairness to Kabizi, he doesn't say anything. He just starts to try and do his thing. But there's only 15 seconds or something left. No, and then when he, no, yeah, and and then I, I was nine by the time he took his his run up. But then the prop, the sub prop for France charges again. Now, if we're talking about being consistent and stay, <laughs> sticking to protocol, I I think the ref should have gone. Whoa, 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 whoa. We're resetting the clock. And I think they should have reset the clock and let Garbizi go again. But I would imagine that uh, the, <laughs> the, uh, the referees wouldn't have made it out of, out of there if that had happened. I think they would have been baying for blood, the, the French. But um, yeah, you know, for us being stickler for rules, that's you're not allowed to do that. Yeah. I mean, I'm going to start off by saying if that had happened, if the referee had done that, I would have had no problem with it whatsoever. 
But I just look at it and go, that that kind of charge when the ball falls off happens quite often, actually. And players are just told, no, no, you don't understand the laws, get back. And then everybody carries on. However, I don't remember one of those happening since the shot clock's been involved. And that does make a difference. Because I think in previous times, like the referee yeah. would have just allowed the player to have extra time without bothering it. He, 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 what would have happened there? You're absolutely bang on. What would have happened was... The, the the kick would, the kicker would have gone oh well, I'm just going to start my my routine again yeah and it would have been another ninety seconds but he he had you know nine whatever seconds to do it so I think they probably look I think either way there would have been massive controversy if he had a, had a done that but it's it's you know you're talking about at the highest level of the game I mean how do the players not know that you're not you have to stand still many players don't know many of the laws Elko it's just, <laughs> it's just the way and it is front row. Yeah, oh, okay. no, it's true. Nobody does. Nobody does. Like, I, I feel like I'm fairly well versed in the laws, but I'm sure I don't know all of them. I'm certain of it. Now, the other point I wanted to make, though, is kind of material effect, right? So referees have got a law book, which they use to manage a game. And I felt that there was no material effect in this, right? And, and my evidence for that is that I didn't see a single sort of Italian player point to the French bloke and say, hang on, he ch- charged or I didn't see Garbisi sort of complain about it afterwards. I think he was totally focused on what he was doing and he was only concerned about the clock. So I'm happy for referees, to referee within the laws as a framework. And again, like I said at the start, if he had have used the laws in this situation, I would have had no problem with that. I've also got no problem with how he actually refereed it. Yeah, I mean, look, like, yeah, like you, you, you go, it's just, it's just one of those where you just look at it and go, a bit like the South African block, um, uh, Kobe went when uh, in the is that in the semis, I think, um, mm. against France, uh, the other way around, and whether he started his run early, early, early or not. Um, but yeah, I take, I, I take about, I mean, my, my you, you texted me and said, Was there any material effect earlier? <laughs> and I went, Well, yeah, he missed the kick, <laughs> Do you, know you might have missed anyway. So, well. Maybe, or arguably, as you said, you know, in the old rules, you would have had an, you would have had your routine to go, and he would have, he would have kicked it. Um, I mean, fair play to him for. I mean, if you look at, it, he, he had to rush so much. You know, he it went. I don't know what his routine is. Well, I presume it's going to be something like thirty-five seconds, some of that. He, he, it, it took him nine. So, um, and maybe a more. I mean, I, would, I wonder what would have... he. It was too much of a risk for him because we haven't seen this before. I think it would have been a massive risk for him to say, whoa, whoa, ref, I want to start again. And Ridley just goes, no. Yeah. And just go, end of. So he he kind of he kind of couldn't take that risk and had to go through with, with what happened. But probably, was, thir- was, was a draw fair? <laughs> it probably was actually over the balance of the yeah. game, I think, because France yeah. was so dominant in the first half and Italy did it, did probably enough to win in the second. But I think overall... You know, I think it was a pretty even game. Um, I just wonder, I, I'm sure that obviously the referees are going to look at this. And I'm not sure, like I said, I'm not sure if this has happened before. So it might be a learning point that if the ball falls over, somebody charges, they automatically reset the clock um, and just go from there. It's a, I think it's a really interesting one. And I can understand, you know, really sort of passionate opinions on either side. Um, yeah, yeah, so that's why I yeah, said he re- he reset the clock in the first half, didn't he? When he given the kicker the wrong um, the wrong spot off right. of, uh, off of off of the red card incident. Oh, I missed um, that. I missed that. Okay. Yes, yeah, because they they gave him the wrong spot and said it's from there, and then the clock had started, and then and then Tempest came in and said no, we're further back onto where the advertising was on the pitch, and then he went reset the clock. So, yeah, you're right. It hasn't happened before, and I I doubt they thought they'd ever see it in an indoor. <laughs> arena the ball fall off he'll never yeah. he'll never let that happen again I can tell you yeah I mean final thoughts for me are <clears throat> what a brilliant game like so much drama so much like there's some really good play there's some incredible physicality uh, it's just what for me Six Nations is all about and I hope plenty of people are talking about the game itself rather than the final decision yeah uh, 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 it was a brilliant Six Nations game it was just uh it was just awesome. Um, so French and so Italian in, in the yeah. same thing. And just two passionate, you know, uh, lots of players go, going out of the stages. And again, you know, the physicality in, in that first half was was as good as you'll see in a test game. You know, it was brilliant.
Loved it. Yeah. Okay. People at home, that is what we think. But what do you think? I'd love to hear your opinions on that final decision, by the way, and everything else as well. Let's hear it about some of the players that you think played well um, and how this game was, I was going to say won or lost, but neither of those. Uh, So we'll have all that in the comments down below and give this video a thumbs up while you're down there, if you don't mind. It helps other people find it, which is good for everybody. Uh, Alco, thanks so much again today, mate. Cheers, TT. Loved it. Great weekend of rugby. Great weekend of rugby. And people at home, you can subscribe there. You can watch that one next. And don't forget to get out and play.